Hi, my name is James Snyder, and this is the extra credit assignment one for ENY 4573, and this is honeybee anatomy. Honeybees are spread around the world. They have become an important resource for both ecosystems and humans alike. And it is by observing honeybee anatomy that we can begin to understand the specializations that exist in today's honeybee populations. The honeybee sits in the class Insecta in the order Hymenoptera, and their genus is Apis. Bees are holometabolous, meaning that they go through four different life cycles, egg, larva, pupa, and adult. And it is in this presentation that I'm going to focus on the adult honeybee. Honeybees, like all other insects, have a segmented body, as I've highlighted here. Protecting the internal organ system is a hard, sclerotized exoskeleton, and it's important to notice that the sensory hairs cover the entire body. Before I start with the anatomy, I'd like to go over some of the features of the social bee. The branched body hairs, which I spoke of, or as we call them, the plumose hairs. Uh, the pollen-collecting hairs on the back hind leg, or the corbicula. Uh, these animals are also pollen nectar feeders, which means that their diet is primarily made up of pollen and nectar, in which they refine into a uh, sugary substance and eventually honey. Uh, they also nest in hollows, or in the ground, in some species. Uh, the adults are winged, and the constricted waist, of, often seen in wasp, is not always evident in these species. In fact, a portion of the abdomen extends into the metathorax. Okay, here we've gone back to our honeybee, and now it's time to take a look uh, at the anatomy of a honeybee. The honeybee is split into three basic parts. The head, the thorax, which includes the two pairs of wings and all sets of legs, and the abdomen. The head can be further divided into its key components. The compound eyes, each of which have 69,000 faucets or lenses. This allows the insect to see into the ultraviolet spectrum. It does not see, however, into the red spectrum, uh, which humans can. And like humans, they have a trichromatic vision Unlike humans, which have blue, green, and red receptors, bees have just blue, green, and ultraviolet receptors in their compound eyes. Bees have three more eyes, which we call the ocelli, located on the top of the bee's head. Next, the mandibles, or the mouth parts. Bees are interesting because they have two sets of mouths, or two different kinds of mouths. They have a chewing mandible, they also have a lapping or a sucking labrum. It is actually the maxilla and the labrum that come together to form a complex tongue, or this proboscis. The mandibles are then used for manipulating wax, uh, biting other bees, or intruders into the hive. As mentioned in the last slide, the maxilla and the labium come together to form a tongue, or a proboscis. This is what the bee uses to extract nectar from the flowers. Okay, and the last part of the head that I'm going to go over is the antennae, which has 12 segments, the scape being that that attaches at the top, the most flexible part, attaches to a ball and socket, and then there are also 10 distal segments. The antennae act as sensory structures that help the bee to perceive stimuli. The thorax is divided into three segments, and I've gone ahead and taken the diagram from the lecture to iterate this point because it is very nicely done. The first segment, or the prothorax, shown in red, has no wing attachments. It does, however, have the foreleg coming off the bottom. The center segment, shown in red, or the mesothorax, is where the forewing attaches. And finally, we have the metathorax, which is where the hind wing will attach. Also, the hind leg attaches here. And as I didn't say in the last one, the mesothorax, the middle leg, will attach to the middle thorax. So the front leg will attach to the prothorax, the middle leg will attach to the mesothorax, and the hind leg will finally attach to the metathorax. And finally, the abdomen. I've gone ahead and queued up the picture of the segmentation, or these tergites, uh, just to specify that if they are on top, which the ones that you can see in the picture are, these are called tergites. Now if they're on the bottom, these are sternites. These are the sternite plates. In between these plates is where the secretion glands for the wax is produced, at which point the bee grabs it off the bottom, moves it up to its mouth, and manipulates it with its mandibles in order to uh, manipulate it into making comb. One last thing about the abdomen. Uh, as you can see here, this gray portion, just sitting right behind the metathorax, is actually an extension of the abdomen. 
and this is getting rid of the constricted waste that you see in most wasp and uh, paper wasp, etc. Uh, in the bees, it doesn't seem to have that. They actually have this extra segment of uh, abdomen that stretches into the thorax just behind the metathorax. Okay, that is going to conclude my presentation on honeybee anatomy. Once again, my name is James Snyder, and thank you for watching. Also, I'm going to leave you with some footage shot in Ultra HD by Jacob and Katie Schwartz that I found on YouTube. Enjoy! See if you can identify some of the structures that I've talked about in this presentation.